I wanted to tell a more personal story that might inspire young people considering a life of public service. How my career in politics really started with a search for a place to fit in, a way to explain the different strands of my mixed up heritage and how it was only by hitching my wagon to something larger than myself that I was ultimately able to locate a community and purpose for my life. I'm old fashioned. I, I write in longhand initially. I had an outline for how the book would proceed. I took out some yellow pads. I was very particular about the pens I use. And then I'd just, with my left-handed scrawl, write out a bunch of stuff and then transfer it onto a, a computer. And that it was usually during the, that transfer from writing to computer that I did my first edit. I'm a night writer. So usually my best writing was done after Michelle and the girls had gone to bed. Uh, you know, I'd probably stay up until two o'clock in the morning from about 10 to two is when I could really lock in and I didn't have a lot of distractions. Things got a little more intense uh, in the summer when we were getting closer to deadline. Uh, so it wasn't just nighttime in which I was uh, having to go at it. Um, but. At the end of the day, I, I wouldn't call myself a, a quick writer, but, uh, but I'm a pretty thorough writer. And once I've got what I consider to be an acceptable chapter for somebody to read, it's usually in, in decent shape. My main task is then cutting a bunch of it because I usually got too much to say instead of too little. particular memory uh, stands out because there's so many of them. You know, obviously there are the big public events that a lot of people are mindful of, uh, you know, the Bin Laden raid or the financial crisis. Maybe the thing I enjoyed writing about the most were the quieter moments, you know, the, the moments uh, spent with my family or the moments sometimes alone where I'm wrestling with issues and, and, and evoking or, or reminding myself of the feelings and doubts and fears that I was going through and making some of the big decisions that I've done audiobooks for my first two books. Um, and I think it's a little bit, and I've got always got to be careful about this analogy, but maybe it's a little bit like childbirth in the sense that you forget the pain because there's great joy at the end of it. Having run our leg of the race to completion, we took satisfaction in knowing that we'd done our very best. And however much I'd fallen short as president, whatever projects I'd hoped but failed to accomplish, the country was in much better shape than it had been when I'd started. As a writer, when you're reading, invariably you're gonna come across some places where you go, man, I'd like to make an edit right here or make a little adjustment or tweak here. And you just gotta roll with it, especially if it's a, if it's a, a lengthy book. And then there are days where, you know, you're a little tongue tied. There's certain expressions that constantly give you trouble. Um, but overall, you know, it, it's a reminder that the written word, uh, you know, is, is ultimately a derivative of our voices and, and, and the human voice, I think, uh, maybe can transmit some things that the written page can't. I'm hopeful that people, uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy listening to it. Uh, if, uh, if they don't have an opportunity to read it. One of the messages that I hope is universal uh, and not just specific to American readers is the sense that we've been on a trajectory of increased freedom, increased human rights, uh, increased tolerance, in increased mutual understanding uh, during most of my lifetime, but that none of that's a given. Democratization is not a given. Uh, greater recognition of the rights of women is not a given. 
rising living standards and, and greater educational opportunity and reduced violence. Those things aren't a given. And so I, I think every country is going through what America is going through, which is how do we deal with globalization, technology, greater interconnectedness, and our impulse towards nationalism, older forms of identity, tribalism, racial prejudice, um, the desire for top-down strong men to tell us what to do as opposed to each of us having our own voices and, and being able to cooperate together uh, based on uh, a sense that every person has dignity and respect. And it's an ongoing process, and, and it's one in which each of us has a role to play in, in affirming those values and ideals that, at its best, America has tried to represent. Uh, sometimes it's fallen short. But I don't think they're uniquely American values. I just think that as embodied in our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution and in our promotion of human rights and, and values and democracy at our best in our foreign policy, I think that we've tried to speak for the broader aspirations of, of people around the world. And uh, we've seen some backsliding on that. And, and part of my goal in the book, I think, is to hopefully rally those forces who say you know, th those are values and ideals. What I fighting. hope to accomplish is I want to give an honest reckoning of my time as president, the events and people that shaped uh, those eight years, and give people some insight into the decision-making process that we went through. I'm also hoping that it gives people some idea of what it's like to be president of the United States and some of the highs and lows that are involved in that. The fact that it's a job and there's an office, even though it's a pretty famous office, and some of the same challenges and joys and frustrations that people experience in any difficult work uh, happen there. I'd like people to get a sense of what Michelle and I as a family with our kids went through. Uh, in this big transition. Maybe most of all, I want to give young people hopefully some inspiration, some sense of how I, as a young man, was able to translate uh, a whole bunch of issues that I had into working on things that were larger than myself. And to remind people that our government, our democracy, is not something separate and apart from us, but is something that belongs to us and that each of us can serve a role to play, whether it's an elective office or, or as a citizen. Mm -hmm.